Did you ever come across a plant just covered in aphids and wondered, what the heck is that insect all about? Well, the aphids are related to the cicadas, the plant hoppers, the frog hoppers, and if you're from Latin America, the infamous machaca. They're what we call the homoptera, or sometimes known as the wax bugs. Ooh, just lost a bunch of karma points there. The homopterans are extremely diverse in body shape and adaptations. One characteristic in common is a sucking mouth part that is beak-like and set back of the head. This differs from the hemiptera, whose beak is on the front of its head. Their wings are membranous, and many are stupendous jumpers. Wax glands are found on different parts of their bodies. This wax gives a protective coating. They all feed on plant sap and go through incomplete metamorphosis. That is, a nymph like this one hatches from an egg, molts many times, and finally molts into an adult. Among the cicadas and hoppers, there are two main groups. The tree hoppers, spittle bugs, and leaf hoppers have their antennae below the eye, but the acelae is above the eye. All the plant hopper families have their antennae and their acelae below the eye. A whole different suborder includes the aphids and scale insects. Beasts from these families are generally small and not very active, and they have only one or two segments of the tarsi. With some better moves, these scale insects could get jobs in Vegas. One unmistakable sound from the lowland forest of Costa Rica is the pulsating, often deafening, sound of the cicada. This racket is produced by timbals on the first abdominal segment that vibrate rapidly. The timbal is located here, while the tympana, the hearing organ, is over there. Males hang out together and join voices in synchronized buzzing in the hope that females will come in for mating. They must be hard of hearing. The nymphs can spend several years feeding on the sap of tree roots and then crawl up tree trunks where their skin splits down the back to unveil the adult. This molt is often found on tree trunks. The adults feed on fluids from the tree's xylem, but rarely cause damage. One homopteran you may encounter in groups is the tree hopper. They are easily distinguished by their humpback, which is a modification of the prothorax into spines, thorns, heels, and bizarre growths. Many live solitary lives, but some are social, and a few exhibit inbreeding among family members. The nymphs often form social aggregations in company with their mommy, feeding, molting, feeding, and molting. In many species, the nymphs produce honeydew, which is fed upon by ants, or in some cases, by bees. Treehoppers aren't major agricultural pests. The horns or spines probably serve several functions, such as mimicry, looks like a thorn, feels like a thorn, sexual display, my horn is bigger than yours, and warning colorations, stay away, I'm a badass. The horn is loosely attached, and self-amputation may have its place in life. Also, these structures are covered with sensory hairs that could sense smells, wind, or sound. Some are known to produce a drumming noise. The nymphs look pretty gnarly, too. The main character of this family is the hump or horn thing on the back. Now 
that's a true Holopteran road warrior. The variation of the horn reaches bizarre proportions, something like costumes at Carnival. Some say the horns make them look hard to swallow, but maybe they mimic seeds, or maybe they're Satan worshippers. As they feed on plant juices, waste products are excreted out. While their fossils are rare, they are found preserved in amber in the Dominican Republic. Amber, or copal, is ancient plant sap. And of course, they do hop. The best way to find leaf hoppers is by sweep sampling. But an even better way to appreciate these psychedelic hoppers is to miniaturize yourself and take a tropical mystery tour through the grass. Whoa, that's a trippy hopper.